If you or someone you love finds their happy place in the garden, you're going to love this tutorial today for a five pocket garden apron. Two big pockets, three smaller ones to hold all your gardening stuff. And it is so easy to make. I'm also going to show you how to make these ties. You always see them on Pinterest and social media where it's super cute and it's tied around in the front usually on a petite model. So I'm gonna show you how to measure and figure out what size you need to make you look cute no matter what your waist size. Cause I'm gonna admit the basic size doesn't fit my waist. So you are not alone if it doesn't fit yours. Ready to get started? Let's look at what we need. So first you're obviously going to need some fabrics and here are what you need. I'm going to be using these chickens for both the front and the back of the fabric. So I've cut two pieces, 20 inches, by 13 inches. Then for the first pocket, the taller pocket, I'm going to use these cute little windmills. And this is all from my uh, Spring Barn Quilts fabric collection from Riley Blake Designs. So it, it feels a little weird that the pocket is actually bigger than the apron, but we're gonna be folding it in half. So just trust me on this, I've made more than one. So for the bigger pocket, you're gonna cut 20 by 16 inches. Then the smaller pocket is going to be black. And you're going to cut that 20 by 10 inches. Then you need two sashes, which you can do with the fabric, cut off the selvage four inches wide and just see how that fits. And you might have to tie it in the back, you might have to tie it in the front, or you can jump ahead and see where I show you how to measure and figure out exactly how long you need it to be for you or someone else if you can measure their waist and make it so that it's gonna tie super cute in the front, like all the garden aprons you see on social media. The last piece of fabric is going to be the waistband. And I decided for this one to have my waistband match the bigger pocket. If you look at this other one, I did that a little bit differently. So I did a waistband that matched the color, but not the exact same fabric. So on this one, I used four different fabrics and I also did a scrappy sash where I put together some different fabric scraps that were all four inches wide and made it as long as I wanted versus it today, we are going to just use the single or the two long pieces of fabric. So that's your fabric. Now, it's really important that a garden apron have some stability to it because it's going to have heavier things in it like trowels and your phone and I don't know, all kinds of things that you don't want just flopping around. So you need some interfacing. You can use any kind of medium weight. What I used was this ES114 Easy Shaper Interfacing from Pellon. I just went and bought one packet, which was 20 inches by one yard or 36 inches. I got the three pieces that I need and then I have another 20 inch by nine inch piece to use for something else. So for your interfacing, you're just gonna cut a half an inch smaller than the outside and both of the pockets. That's your basic supplies. The first step is to get our interfacing on the back of our three pieces. I'm going to put it on the back of the apron front, which in my case, I'm using the same for the front and back, so it doesn't really matter. But if you're gonna use different fabric on the front and back, I would recommend putting your interfacing on the front, and then we will do the two pockets. So grab your fabric, you're gonna turn it upside down on your ironing board. And just make sure whatever kind of interfacing you use that you follow the manufacturer's instructions. So I do have those right here to check on. And then a fusible interfacing always has a little bit of a shiny side and a duller side. The shiny side is the fuse. So it is the stuff that you're going to heat and adhere to your fabric. So you wanna put that shiny side down against your fabric and we cut it so that it will be about a quarter inch smaller than our piece of fabric because we don't need this all this added bulk in our seams. And you do not iron right on this. You want to use a pressing cloth, which is basically a thin piece of cotton. And the directions say that it should be damp. Well, I'm not gonna take it to my sink. I'm going to use this cute little sprayer. So I'm just gonna keep moving my iron. You could also use a heat press. So if you have a big heat press or you have like a Cricut heat press, you could use that. And then you're going to be able to do a bigger area at once. When you think you have that all pressed properly, just lift it up and check the corners. Oh, this one, so it's 
pretty good, but I didn't quite hit the corners well. So just put your pressing cloth back down and give that a little bit more heat. You wanna make sure it's just adhered nicely all the way across your fabric and definitely on those edges. Now let me show you how to do the pockets. And because we're going to be folding this fabric to make the pocket so that the inside is covered, we didn't need a piece of interfacing that covered the entire fabric, like with the outside, we just need to cover half. So again, check that the fusible side is down and put it down at on one long end and just leave a little bit for the seam allowance. And then we're just gonna do the same thing. Put that pressing mat down, get a little dampness where that interfacing is and press. And I'm gonna do this for both of the pockets. So we have the interfacing on one half of each of the pockets. So now we're just gonna fold the other half down. We're gonna line up all those edges and we're going to press the top edge of the pockets. So there's one. Now we have our three fabrics, the apron front, the bigger pocket and the smaller pocket with the interfacing all lined up. Now we are going to do our lines to make our five pockets. And I'm gonna show you how we're going to flip and stitch to get that done. So the first one we're gonna do is this center pocket. And it, if you are using a directional fabric like I am, cause you'll see some of these are flipped around but most of them are coming in this direction. You wanna make sure that this is the side that will go on the front of your pocket, because if you did it this way, they're all gonna look upside down on your apron, which is not ideal. So this should be 20 inches wide, just about, not quite perfect, but perfect enough. And I'm just going to draw a line at the 10 inch mark with my heat erasable pen. And look at that, that's gonna be really easy to see where to sew. And the second I put the iron on it, any heat on it, it is just going to disappear like magic. So that is our first line. Now I'm gonna start layering this together. So I'm gonna put the apron down and now I'm going to line this up on the bottom. Now I'm going to put the bottom pocket on and make sure you're putting the, all the raw edges at the bottom. So these are the two pockets. This one's gonna have three pockets. So we're going to put a line three inches to either side of this center line. This is a chalk marker from Clover. Let's put it three inches from that center line and then three inches to the other side as well. So I'm lining up on that line and also lining up along the top edge of my pocket to make sure this line is gonna go nice and straight. We're gonna start by sewing one of the two lines on the small pocket to the bigger pocket. And it doesn't matter which one you start with. I do usually start on the raw edges. So if you have any issue with your knot not being great, it's not gonna be at the top of a pocket where you might see it. And then I am going to double back when I get to that fold just to reinforce the top of the pocket. So let's just get one of those sewn. Now I'm going to get my apron front and I'm going to line up the raw edges on the bottom and the sides of both pockets and my apron. See that? Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to flip this bottom pocket section. I'm gonna fold that back so that we can see the line on the larger section and we're gonna sew that to the apron. We can't just flip this back and sew here or else you're gonna have a really weird sewn section in this big pocket. So we're gonna do a little bit more flipping. We're just going to lift the pockets, flip the apron fabric. So I folded that back. So now when I sew this second line, I'm only sewing through both of those pockets. So just make sure everything's lined up and we're gonna do this third stitch line. Now our pockets are sewn on and I ironed it to get rid of the lines, got rid of the chalk marks. I trimmed a little bit on the edge to make sure everything was evened up. Now we are going to attach the apron front and pockets to the back. So we're gonna leave this face up, put the back face down or right sides together. If you wanna have just uh, squared corners, you're just going to pin and sew this together now. But I wanna show you how to make the cute little curved corners. I'm going to use just a small Pyrex cup. I think that's like a one cup size. You can use 
a coffee mug, you could use a bowl, but I like the size of this and I happen to have it in my sewing room. So I'm just gonna put this on the two bottom corners and draw with my pen. I'm gonna clip all these layers together so that they will be less likely to move about as I cut those corners. I'm going to put some marks just at the top so that when I'm sewing, I remember to leave that section open for turning right side out. One thing I love about this project is because we are using a waistband and we're not just using this top edge, we're not gonna have to be as detail oriented when we turn and press that top because that opening is going to be hidden. That's why you wanna do it at the top and not on the side or the bottom. And then I'm gonna hold my hand here to try and keep it from shifting too much and then just cut that corner. Now I'm gonna to do the second one. Now you're gonna take it to the sewing machine. You're gonna sew all the way around, leaving this open for turning. And I'm gonna use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance just because there are so many layers that if you use a quarter inch, it might just be a little bit too small and something might not catch very well. So I've found that going a little bit bigger than that is better for this project. You could even do a half inch if you want to be extra, extra sure. Now that we've sewn all around that, we just need to clip the curves and also the corners. Because there is so much fabric here, I mean, look at that. I'm going to first trim this closer to the curve. So there's just less bulk sitting in there when it's turned. And then I'm going to do a bunch of little cuts. Now, normally I like to use pinking shears for this but I tried that on the last one and I'll show you in a second. It doesn't work super well. Just make sure when you're doing this, especially if you use big scissors like this, don't cut your stitch line. Let me show you what happens if you wanna try pinking shears. If you try and go more than like two or three teeth from the back, it bends. So it can be done. You just have to go a lot slower. Next step. We are going to turn it right side out. And then I just stick my hand in here and get these curves smoothed out nicely. So now I'm just gonna take it to the ironing board and I'm gonna press it. And you'll see it naturally just wants to, to lay like that because these three pieces with all that interfacing are a lot thicker than this one back piece. So you do wanna make sure when you're pressing that you get that folded over because you just want the bottom of your pocket and not part of the back of your apron showing. Now that I have this nicely pressed, I'm going to edge stitch all the way around the entire apron, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And I've decided to use black thread on the top and a tan bobbin so it won't show as much on the back of the apron. Now that we have this all sewn together, we just need to do the sashes and the waistband. So I brought out my skinny mini mannequin to show you how to measure either whoever your apron is gonna be for or for yourself so that you can make it super cute and have the sashes wrap around and tie in the front because you might need bigger than the basic with the fabric. I do, so don't feel bad if you do. So we're gonna pretend this apron is too big for her. We're gonna pretend that it is this wide, okay? And she's gonna have, stop tipping. She's gonna have it sit right about here on her hips. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure from here all the way around to the center, okay? So I'm gonna grab the tape measure and I'm gonna put it right on the hip where the apron ended on the one side. I'm gonna wrap it straight around and then I'm just gonna stop kind of in the center because that is where we're going to want to tie. So I'm gonna take that measurement, 27, oh, she is skinny, 27, and then I'm going to add 10, 10 to 12 inches, depending on how much longer you want your sash to be. For the sashes, you're just going to take these long pieces or the pieces that you piece together, four inches by whatever you need, you're going to fold it in half, and then you're just going to sew one short end and all the way down the long end. I never pin this, I just, make sure it's lining up as I'm putting it through the sewing machine. But if you're a newer sewer teaching somebody to sew or just prefer it, you can pin it that whole length. So you're gonna do both of those and then we're gonna turn those right side out. Now I wanna show you one of my favorite things when you're doing long straps 
or sashes or whatever. Bag things for bags, basically long tubes that you need to turn right side out. Now, growing up, when my mom was teaching me to sew, we would put a um, safety pin on the end and then scrunch it. And I'm telling you, it is so hard on your hands to do that. So I want to show you how to use these fabric tubes from Dritz if you haven't used them before. It has a nice uh, plastic tube that's slippery, that's important. And then it has like a dowel rod or kind of looks like a chopstick. So what we're gonna do, and we're gonna do this for both of our sashes. I have it sewn together. We're sewed across and down, left one end open. I'm going to clip the corner. Just cut that off so that we can get that turned well. And then, it's the fun part. I'm just going to put the tube into the fabric and just push it all the way down. Okay, see, that's pretty long, but you're gonna be amazed at how fast we can turn this. All right, next you're going to take the stick and you're going to insert it, just kind of push the fabric in the end gently. Don't do it too hard because if you really jam it hard, you could pop through your stitches or your fabric, which would be a bummer, but fixable. Anything's fixable on sewing, except messed up cutting. So you're just going to push that in and then you're just going to pull that fabric down until you can see the tube and the stick. So now all you're gonna do is you're just gonna pull it like that. Ah, look at how fast that was. Oh my gosh, just pull that off. Now don't take the stick out yet because what you wanna do is you want to take the stick and gently push out those corners and then you're good to go. Now all you have to do is go to the iron and the ironing board and pull that seam out and make it nice and straight and flat. I wish there was a tool that did that as quickly as this turns this thing, but you know what? This saves a ton of time over turning this right side out with a safety pin, so I'm gonna take it. Now I'm gonna show you how I figure out the perfect width for the waistband. I mean, if everything went perfectly, you would turn a, you know, turn a quarter inch on each end and it would be the same width as your apron. But as we saw in the beginning, my apron was slightly off. So I just like to do it this way. I put, line my apron up with my waistband and then I just fold it so that it matches and I press each end. This way, you're going to have your waistband be the exact width that you want it the first time without having to adjust it later if your apron is slightly larger or skinnier than you thought it was going to be in the beginning. So see, perfection. So now I can put that aside. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do each of these long edges. I'm gonna press them under a quarter inch. Then the final step before we sew this on is to fold it in half. Moving right along, it is time to connect the sashes to the apron and then put on the waistband. So each sash, you're going to put the raw edges like this, about an inch in from the edge and have this, the sashes going off the side. And now just like we used the top of the apron to determine the length of the waistband, we are going to use the folded waistband to determine tuck that we're going to put into the waistband. So you see, well, let's actually put it right on there so we can see how it is folded over. And you'll see the waistband is slightly bigger. We don't want it sticking out. So what I do is I just take a really small tuck like that in the sash, make sure it's gonna be well inside that waistband. And I overlap about an inch and then I'm just gonna put a little pin in that. And then I'm going to sew a rectangle to get that nice and secure. I'm going to tuck this side the same way. Now our last step is to attach the waistband and it's just going to fold right over the top edge of your apron and it's gonna conceal the edge of your sashes and make it all look beautiful. Now, if you want to include a tag, you could put it in the back. So I'm gonna get this lined up. 
So the fold is on the top edge and these ends are lined up correctly. And then I'm just going to flip this back. I'm gonna put my tag there. Do you put tags on things? Lots of people get them made with their names or there's so many funny tags you can get now. Let me know in the comments if you're a tagger, not a tagger. So I pinned that where it needs to be, but because I'm gonna be sewing from the front, I'm going to just pin again in the same spot to make sure that I catch that tag. And then I'm gonna take the pin out of the back because that's gonna be easier to take out as I sew. So once you get this all lined up, you just need to pin across this edge. And then we are going to sew all four of the sides. This five pocket apron is ready to roll.